What is going on everybody? Alex here, sitting on my beautiful golden sofa, having a little think. Um, let me know what you, what you guys think of this. I'm just gonna let these ideas unfurl, but I've got a good feeling that what I'm about to talk about is going to help you do one of two things or both. It's going to help you realize your deepest passion. And we often struggle with the idea of, of passion and whether it exists at all and whether it's something that's constantly changing or whether it's something that just um, you'll find through doing stuff, whatever. But um, this could be a nice exercise to pay attention to, to help you realize what you are um, holding in high standards, what you really consider to be important to you in your life. And um, on the flip side of that, this is also going to be an interesting unfurling of ideas that could also reveal a way at the same time to help you deal with some of your most pernicious insecurities. And I've, I want to discuss how the two are very often very closely intertwined. So this could be of interest to you guys. So what my theory is, and I'm pretty much 100% sure on this, I'm, I'm, I'm putting this idea out there, but I, I believe, I'm going to put this out there, I believe that everybody has one uh, really strong red hot passion that they believe in more than anything else. There's one outstanding passion, something that you hold in extremely high regard, something that you really care for, something that you really hold in importance. And it is something that you have, it's very firmly enmeshed in your own value system. Like for you, it's very important that you have this as one of your highest, highest regarded values. And my belief is that Everyone has one of these deep passions, and it's one of the, and it's a passion that rises above all the other ones, notably. But it's also so important in your life that it tends to mean that you are so fearful of criticism in whatever the opposite of that passion is, that you have often created a deeply rooted insecurity around avoiding the criticism of whatever it is that is manifested in the opposite of that passion. And I've been thinking about all the people I know and I think that this, this holds true and I wanna see if this can apply to you. But in my case, what I've realized over the years is that my deepest passion is, and my deepest, my, my highest held value for me is aliveness, aliveness of character. It's being able to express oneself fully, and have fun in the world and speak it like it is and speak our truths and act from the heart, really truly being ourselves and, and living with aliveness, living with a sense of abundance and fun. That for me is an extremely important element of being human. And I realized, and this reared its ugly head at school, was that because I held aliveness in such high regard, I was totally fearful of any form of criticism that would show itself in my peers that would mean that I had any of the opposite of that deeply held belief. Because I held it in such high regard, I have such a passion and, and, I, and I consider it so important to me, the idea that people need to be alive, need to, need to feel a sense of aliveness, that whenever someone criticized me for being the opposite of that, i.e. dead, boring, too serious, not fun enough, all of those things, I would really feel the pain most strongly. And the problem with that is, is that we can very easily end up shielding ourselves from that criticism and shielding ourselves very tightly because we consider the opposite of our passion to be so important to not reveal in ourselves that we often end up creating these shields to our own personalities. We create these masks as we go through life um, and a lot of these masks are very closely related to the passions that we have. So we kind of inadvertently through life, many of us, build these walls around ourselves that actually create a personality almost that is very often in direct contrast to the very passion that we hold in such high regard. So in my case, I believe strongly that we all need to have this sense of aliveness and in closing down to the criticism of being not alive and being boring I created this shield that meant that I acted um, without much personality I acted in a dead way in order to protect myself from that criticism 
And that has led to all kinds of anxieties and shames and, and um, insecurities surrounding um, and that have come out of my need to protect myself from any kind of criticism in that area. And I want to think about you for a second. What is it that you, uh, res what is it that you really have trouble with being criticized around? That for me is a very good indication of where your passions could lie. It's just an interesting, it's an interesting thing. So where you fear being criticized the most strongly, where, where is it that when someone says, oh, you're, you're, you're a bit like that, or you, you're like this, and you feel it the, the most strongly, where have you created um, barriers to avoiding that kind of criticism in your life? And where do you, where do you tend to really blow up and get extremely angry about something that's usually very innocently put from whoever it is that's doing the damage? That is a great indication of where your strongest passion lies. So the value in this little chat that we're having here, hopefully, is that we can use the things that we're fearful, the most fearful of being criticized in. In my case, again, it was it's being boring, it's being dull, it's being unalive, being dead. We can use that understanding of where our really our emotions are wrapped up to point the way to where our passion is. So that's a great way of figuring out our passions. And now I know through this awareness that my passion lies in helping myself and helping others live a life that is truly alive and truly passionate and truly creative in line with purpose. That is my, that I know for a fact is my absolute purpose. And I love being able to help people find their own passion and their own aliveness. So through the pain and the insecurities that this has created in me, I've been able to see an arrow pointing exactly back towards where my passion is. So, Think about how that, how that might apply to you. Where do you find your wounds? Where do you get particularly um, resistant to criticism? Which area is that for you? Because that could very well be pointing towards your deepest passion. So the other thing that this reveals is how we can start to unwrap the firm beliefs we have around ourselves that we've created through our resistance to being criticized in the thing that we don't want to be criticized in the most. A lot of us have built these very firm insecurities around this resistance. So we can use myself as the example here. So in my case, because I was so resistant to being criticized for being boring, which I was inevitably, and that created a lot of closing up at school, um, that meant that I was on a strategy, on a mission for the rest of my life until, you know, years ago when I turned things around gradually more and more, I have been on a mission to avoid at all costs the pain that is caused by being criticized for being dead, for being boring, for being too serious. And what that means is that I created a belief that I held fast, because whenever we create a strategy, we create a corresponding belief to hold that strategy in line. So in my case, my strategy to deal with avoiding that criticism was I need to withdraw in order to be safe. Withdrawal is safety. That was my belief growing up through my teens and 20s. I would shut down and be quiet to avoid that criticism. And of course, that meant that people perceived me as as boring and dead and that the very thing that I was trying to avoid, and that, that can happen a lot. The very thing that you're striving to avoid being criticized in will turn you into the thing that you're trying to avoid. It's a funny aspect of human nature. You might find yourself um, being able to agree with some of these ideas. But it also means that we can change our beliefs and we can actually change our experience and we can change and dissolve all of the anxieties and the shames and the fears that are associated with these, um, with these beliefs that we create in ourselves and the limits that these beliefs put on us. Because by putting on beliefs, we're creating labels and that just sucks. So in my case, I... I realized this problem that I was creating for myself and I turned the belief around. I really analyzed that belief and I broke it down and, and um, I, was, I resulted in creating a new belief. And that's what you, you need to do if you have a belief that is, that is hurting you. My new belief became rather than um, withdrawal and closing down is safety, opening up is safety. That was my new belief. And uh, the way to believe in a new belief is simply to find evidence to support the new belief and to find evidence to disprove the previous belief without going into too much detail. So in my case, I thought long and hard about how withdrawal being safe was wrong and how opening up and allowing myself to make mistakes was 
good and a new form of safety. By really internalizing that, I've been able to just totally relax in social situations, which previously caused me pain because social situations were a potential source of that criticism I was so struggling to avoid because of the passion that I had, the interest, the high regard that I held for um, aliveness and self-confidence and outgoingness. Does that make sense? So in, in, in a way, by understanding our the pains we get from our criticisms, the, the, the criticisms we want to avoid the most will point to our passions. And our passions are going to point to our insecurities in some cases. And of course, our own insecurities and our own pains in life are also going to, to point the way towards the beliefs we have that, that limit us. And then by understanding our beliefs, we can break them down. I know that I'm rambling, rambling a little bit in this one, um, but I hope that this has got you thinking about beliefs and passion and um, criticism and how the three intertwine and how we can often take ourselves so seriously because we have such an emotional connection with our passions. Uh, passion can be a double-edged sword. It can be the source of tremendous purpose and joy in our lives like I'm now realizing it can be, but purpose can also create our biggest barriers. So be aware of that. It's a really interesting phenomenon how the things all intertwine. If you wanna have a chat with me face-to-face -face about your own beliefs, your own insecurities, your own passions, and how they intertwine, and how you might wanna start breaking down your beliefs so that you can live a much freer life, um, give, me a, give me a bell, give me a, uh, send me a message, and maybe we can, we can sit down and have a one-to-one -one chat um, about breaking down your beliefs and creating a bit more freedom in your life. Let me know in the messages below, or just send me an email. Uh, alex at uh, realactioncoaching.com or alex at alexmathers.net. Looking forward to hearing from you. I hope this made sense. Do subscribe if you like this and do hit the like button if this made sense. Speak soon.